Hello students, in this video I want to show you how to use and handle a digital multimeter. You can see I have three of them here on the table. I will go step by step through each a little bit and then I want to go in detail here with the Keithley multimeter. The first multimeter you can see here is a little small multimeter. It's a cheap one. It can measure DC voltages, DC current, AC voltages. Then we have here the range for the resistance. Also a diode tester is implemented and also a transistor tester. It has three terminals as you can see here and the rotary switch in the middle. This implements also the on function. So if you switch to a range, for example 20 volts DC, then the multimeter is also switched on. The next multimeter you can see here is a little bit bigger. It has also a rotary switch in the middle. It can measure AC and DC voltages. It can measure the resistance. It has a diode tester inside. It has a transistor tester here. And in addition to this, it can also measure capacitance. So you see up to 400 nanofarad, you can measure capacitance. And it can also measure temperatures. There are four terminals at this multimeter for the normal current and voltage and resistance measurement. And um, there are additional terminals here for the capacitance and temperature measurements. For the temperature measurement, you need a special temperature sensor. On this side, on the right side, you see here the terminal for the RS232 interface for a PC. So you can transfer the data you measured to a PC. Here are some buttons for the backlight and the hold button. And here you see uh, changing the range from AC to DC. This multimeter has an extra on and off button, so with this button you switch on and off the multimeter and then you have to use a useful range here for your measurement with a rotary switch. The right, on the right side you see now the bench multimeter, the Keith Lay. It has much more buttons than the others, so I want to concentrate on these buttons here, on the gray buttons for the normal measurement you take. First of all you have to switch on. With this button, you see on the right side we have five terminals. Um, this multimeter can measure AC, DC voltages and also current. It can measure the resistance. It can also measure temperatures. Here in this case, uh, it also can measure frequencies. Um, there's also a diet testing component inside, but there is um, unfortunately no um, transistor tester inside and also no measurement uh, range for capacitance. If you look at the terminals, you can see all multimeters have a so-called COM terminal, common terminal. That means this terminal is used usually for all measurements you take. So in this case, for the small one, um, if you want to measure a voltage, then you have to use a COM terminal and you have to use this terminal because here you can see here the V for voltage. This terminal also is used for the measurement of resistance and for the low current I would say um, up to 200 milliamps. So we have here milliamps and up to 200 milliamps you have to use this terminal and this terminal. If you want to measure higher current for example uh, 10 amps then you have to use a common terminal and the 10 amp DC terminal. Also for the red one, it's the same principle. So you have a COM terminal, then you have your voltage terminal, and within this terminal there's also the terminal for uh, the resistance and for the diode tester. Uh, on the other side you have then here the two terminals for the milliamps, so for the low current, and also for 10 amp range. Um, this terminal. So if you want to measure 10 amps, for example, or current which is in this range, you have to use a COM terminal and this terminal where the 10 amp label is. For the bench multimeter, it's a little bit difficult to see which terminal you have to use. I want to zoom in here. Hope it works. So we have five terminals, as you can see here. And the common terminal, so the common terminal for all measurements is this black terminal, this one. And um, if you want to measure now um, voltages or temperature 
all frequencies you have to use these two terminals because here is a label input that means this is my normal input if you want to measure a current you can see here it's a label amps that means you need your common terminal and the terminal amps for the four wire resistance measurement you will learn this later maybe in the third semester we have to use here these four terminals this is very important to know so for each measurement for each multimeter you have to use a com terminal and then a useful terminal in a way for your measurement so let's start the practical side very easy i want to measure the voltage um, i have here a breadboard um, and the voltage is applied here on the left side and i want to measure here the voltage which is applied so for the first multimeter i have to use now the common terminal this is my general ground so this is usually your ground in the circuit it must be connected to the com terminal and I want to measure a voltage first thing is I have to set the range to 20 volts it's given now and I plug in here this connector and then you see I have here 5 volts same thing with a red multimeter volts here you can select AC and DC if I have selected AC you see it here in the display if it's not there it's DC and same thing I have here now my common terminal and I want to measure a voltage you see same result 5 volts roundabout and with a multimeter here with a bench multimeter the key slay same thing common ground and my general input and I have to set it here to DC volts you see here V DC that means it's set already to DC volts and you see here my 5 volts. So this was a measurement of a DC voltage and I want to change to an AC voltage. Therefore I take here a transformer yeah, which gives me a AC voltage. Before I start with the measurement I disconnect here the cables and then I set here for this multimeter the range to ACV, so AC voltage. You see here now the range has changed to AC. For this multimeter the range is volts, but at the moment DC, so you have to press the button here. And you see here the AC label inside the display, so I can measure now the AC voltage. And here I have to change the range to AC volts here on the right side I have to turn the rotary switch here to this position. Now I can connect the two cables to the multimeter. For measuring the voltage I need a common input that should be clear for all measurement as I mentioned and I need the voltage terminal here in this case and you see I have 20.5 volts AC. This is usually an RMS value but uh, I will talk about this later, what it means and where are the problems maybe. So we have here 20.5 volts AC. Now I take the other multimeter and also uh, connect this here to the common input and the volt input. The range is to 20 volts. And now you see I have a problem here with the contacts as I have recognized already so if I connect this here you see I have yeah, 20.7 volts 20.8 yeah there are some problems here with the contacts but you see it will measure the AC voltage here okay then I take the other multimeter now also I need the common input and my input here and you see now it shows me 21 volts so the range here of the transformer is 20.5 to 21 volts AC with the Keyslayer multimeter I also have the possibility to measure the frequency of a signal here in this case of this voltage and if I press now the frequency button then you see I have here 50 Hertz so that comes from the grid and this is exactly 50 Hertz. So I can prove this 
AC voltage also seen from the frequency. In the next example, I want to measure a current through a resistor here. I have a resistor on the breadboard and I want to measure here the current through this resistor. It's a DC voltage I applied, it is 16 volts. And I have um, one kilo ohm resistor there, so a current of 16 milliamps should flow. So what to do? Um, the first thing is, at this multimeter I have to set to DCI, so DC current. For this multimeter I have to change back here to DC in general, so I have to press this button again and then I have to set here the current range to, in this case, 400 milliamps. So 4 milliamps is too low, so 400 milliamps is okay for 60 milliamps. And uh, this multimeter has to set to the DC current range, uh, in this case uh, 20 milliamps is it's okay, so we expect uh, 60 milliamps, here in this case 20 milliamps range. So I have here the two connectors. I take now here first multimeter, again common input is every time the same for a measurement and in this case I have to check, okay, I have to measure here the milliamps which are flowing. So if I connect this, you see 15.8 milliamps are flowing here through this one kilo ohm resistor, seems to be okay. So the next multimeter. Um, they are same thing. I have to use a common input and now I have to use this milliamps input because I am a range of milliamps. So I have to take this input here and you see here the same. I have around about 16 milliamps which is flowing through this resistor. And last but not least, bench multimeter, common input. And important is I want to measure a current, so I have to use here the amps input. And you see 16 milliamps are flowing. In the next measurement I want to measure here the resistance of this resistor. Um, in order to do this I have to disconnect all. And important is if you want to measure uh, the resistance um, you have to do that without any power source. What do we need? We need now the two cables here. And we need also here kind of clips like this, or kleps, Klemmprüfspitze in German. So we can connect then here the resistor to it, and on the other side the two cables. Before we start, um, we have to set the multimeters to the useful range. In this case we make the two-wire resistance measurement. That means we press here the button ohm 2. You will see now we get an overflow mega ohm. That means the resistance between the two pins is infinite. That means overflow, they are open. For this multimeter we also have to change the range to here to the resistance range ohm. And you see also we get here an overload O point L. So no connection between here the two terminals. The small multimeter also the same. We have to change it to a resistance range to MAC in this case. And you see we get a one point. That also means overflow, overload, whatever. So there is no connection here between the two pins. So if I take now the two cables connected to the common ground here of this multimeter and the input for the two wire measurement, um, we take here then the clap, put it here to the cables like this. And now I take here um, the resistor pressing here a little bit, so like this. And here also like this. And you can see we have now um, a resistance of point, uh, 2.19 kilo ohm. That means we have a standard resistor here of 2.2 kilo ohm. So if you take now the other multimeter, I just take here the cables 
to it, what do we need? We need the common input, and we also need the input for measuring the resistance. This is this with the ohm symbol. And you see now, after a while, also 2.18 kilo ohm seems to be correct. And for the third device, also COM is important. And we're also measuring here resistance with this terminal. And you see we get yeah, 0 0.001 or 2. That means this range is not good enough to see the exact value. I have to change it here to this range, 20 kilo ohm range. And we see point, uh, yeah, 2 point 0.18 kilo ohm. So last but not least, I want to show you how to test a diet. I have here a diet on a breadboard. Um, therefore, I have to change the range to diet testing. Um, here with this multimeter, you see here the diet symbol. Okay, it's uh, already there. It's okay. Uh, this multimeter has a separate diet testing range, so we have to change it to the diet symbol, the range. Um, for the key slay, there's also diet testing uh, possibility. Um, so uh, the diet symbol is over this ohms 4 button, so um, I have to press shift first and then ohm 4. And you see I have here also the diet symbol, and I can test now the diet. The diet must be tested in both ways. That means the first way is um, we have here our blue cable at the common at the moment, and we have a red in the input. And you see now a voltage which is given with the normal forward voltage, 0 0.2 volts in this case. But we also have to test it in the other side, the other way, and there must be overflow. This is correct. So this diet seems to be okay. The same thing with the other multimeter, common input first, and the diet input. So you see here also the forward voltage around about 200 millivolts. And if I change the polarity, it must be overload or overflow. It's okay. And for the third, same procedure like this. We have now here also around about 200 millivolts and on the other side we have here infinite. That's okay. So the diet is also okay. Good. Okay, that's all from my side was a rough overview about the using and handling the multimeters. I hope it helps a little bit. Thanks a lot. Bye.